Hey guys, today we are sharing with you our very best tips for sleeper cars. Okay guys, we're gonna start out with the first one and that is to find out what type of dining your train is going to have. So they either have flexible dining or traditional mm -hmm. dining and there's a big difference between the both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And we do have menus with pictures of every meal uh, for both on the website at groundandlifetravel.com. So if you wanna see what the menus look like and what the food actually looks like, check that out. But the way you find out which one your train is going to have is when you're booking you can just go look and, and on the booking page on amtrak.com mm -hmm. when you go to book the train there'll be a little button that says details and if you click that button it'll drop down and show you everything on the train mm. like whether it has a cafe all this stuff it'll also tell you whether you're having flexible or traditional dining so flexible dining is the uh kind of style that was recently introduced which is more they're just warming up mm -hmm. meals that are microwave, more like mm -hmm. airline food. Mm -hmm. Traditional dining is the fancy cooked to order, cooked to order food mm -hmm. that everybody wants to get. So check that out, see what you're getting, or check it out before you book the trip to make sure you get the one you want, and then go to the website and see mm -hmm. what's gonna be on both of those menus. All right, now the next one is that you should bring a pair of either flip-flops or shoes that are really quick and easy to put on. Now, the reason for this is if you're in a train uh, or uh, accommodation where you don't have a bathroom in your room, you're going to want to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And mm -hmm. you don't want to spend some time putting on shoes while, you know, in the middle of the night, that's just going to wake you up more. So you just want to put on some flip flops or something that's really quick so you can get right out the door, get to the bathroom and get right back. What you don't want is to go to the bathroom barefoot or in your socks. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you're on the top, like I normally am, you come down, there would be nowhere to sit to put your right. shoes on. You have to sit on the bed of the person in the lower bunk, and that would probably wake her up if I sat on that <laughs> bed, because it's not that big. You'd probably right. end up hitting her in the dark. So uh, definitely, I just leave a flare of flip-flops at the bottom of the mm -hmm. stairs slip them on and you can walk out Easy whenever breezy. you need to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next tip is to bring cash with you, even though they say that it is a cashless system now, mm -hmm. you do want cash in proper denominations to tip. Correct. Um, so we do give, you do want to have to uh, give a tip to your uh, room attendant and to the dining car attendant as well. And we usually suggest uh, two to three dollars per person per meal for your dining and on sleeper car a minimum of five to ten dollars per person per night. And so think about those denominations, what you'll need. You're going to want some ones, you're going to want some fives and maybe tens. So I usually try to run over to the bank and get them to give me, um, you know, the proper change for what I think I'll need. I usually try to get a little bit more because for the most part, I usually end up giving them a little bit more than I intended um, because usually the service is so great. So you want to make sure that you, you know, you tip accordingly. So also keep that in mind. You don't want to have to say, Hey, I want to tip you this, but can you give me some change? Obviously that's not going to happen. So um, just have the right denominations and just kind of think about that ahead of time. Yeah, so the next tip is to bring a bag, one bag with your toiletries mm -hmm. and everything you need for the overnight and leave the other stuff in your other big bag, which you can mm -hmm. check or put in a luggage rack. Yes, um, so we always have the one bag where we put both of our smaller toiletry bags in. We put changes of clothes in there too, um, pajamas, extra things like, you know, an extra pair of socks, should we get a little bit cool in the evening, or mostly me, um, and then just some snack type things, just little things because, uh, you know, that it closes down later, you might wanna have something with you. But you wanna have those that bag with you in your room, and you don't want to have to try to get to your big suitcase or a big bag while you're in your room because, again, there is limited space. You're not gonna have a lot of room to open a bag up or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, another tip that is very helpful is to plan your meal time out so that it doesn't mm -hmm. conflict mm -hmm. with a major big station stop. Uh, a couple reasons for that. One is you won't be able to do the fresh air breaks. So right. you maybe only get fresh air breaks every three to four hours. Right. And so if you're eating your meal during that fresh air break, 
you will miss it or you'll have yeah. to leave your meal and right. to go do it. So especially if you uh, like to get out and smoke, you're going to want to take care mm -hmm. of that. If you just want to get out and walk around, do that too. Uh, and there's a few ways you can check. You can ask the attendant, hey, when's the next uh -huh. fresh air break? That's mm -hmm. the easiest way. Uh, or you can look on the app and if you just pull up the status of your train that you're on, put in the train number and the next station that you're going to get to, mm -hmm. it'll tell you how long that, that stop is anticipated to be. Right. Uh, always go with what the attendant says over that, though, if you can find one, because they do change uh, right. rapidly. But that'll give you right. a pretty good idea of what's coming up next and when the next fresh air break stop mm -hmm. is going to be. Yeah, the staff is always going to be the most updated, obviously, because they're on the actual train and can talk to the conductor and the engineer themselves. So they're always the most up to date. Usually the the app can be a little bit behind, have a little bit of a lag on the catching up with the information. So definitely leaning into that. Next tip is to use the shower. The shower is yes. <laughs> uh, going to be, if you're on a superliner, it's on the lower level. So we have found that Almost <laughs> nobody uses the shower. Yeah. I've never seen yeah. anyone else use a shower. Yeah, we use a shower quite often on there, and it's really just about every time pretty good. But I've yeah. never seen anyone else use it. And yeah, so, yeah, and uh, we do get asked a lot if yeah. there's a line for the shower. We, I've never seen a line because anytime I've been in there, I've clearly been the first person, first or second person to use it. Um, so also, they do provide uh, soap for you and they're in a little sealed baggie just like you would get in a hotel and they also do provide um, the towels for you as well so that's really nice you don't have to worry about trying to throw a towel into your overnight bag they've got that covered for you and they'll launder it so you don't have to worry about it at all yeah next tip is to uh, bring a converter that you can plug a bunch of stuff into mm -hmm. because there is usually only one electrical outlet yes. per room. Unless you're in one of the newer Viewliner rooms, you'll get more there. Mm -hmm. But if you only have one, you're going to be fighting over who's charging their phone. <laughs> so yeah. have one that's like an adapter where you can put several uh -huh. USB items into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes people bring like a power strip type thing uh, where they can plug in several, several things into that if they don't have a bunch of USB items. We usually have a lot of USB things. So we usually have the one little box that holds four little USB plugs, but you could bring something like a power strip and uh, be able to plug in several <clears throat> things into that as well. Yeah, another uh, tip is that there are <clears throat> luggage racks available on the Superliners, big mm -hmm. spacious luggage racks for extra suitcases, but not on the Viewliners. So on the Viewliner, you kind of have to stick those bags mm -hmm. in your room. Mm -hmm. So when we're on a Viewliner, we just check the, the big bags right? because that's going to be uh, the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're on a Superliner, though, you can store them down below or check them either way, whichever you mm -hmm. want to do. Yes. And, you know, there are the luggage racks are up above. And sometimes you think, well, I could stick my bag up there. But you have to think to yourself, I have to push my bag all the way up into that rack. Sometimes it could be a little bit heavy and it's a bit of a struggle to get yeah. it up there, right? So know how big your bag is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it might not go up there. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, next tip is to bring snacks for late night when the cafe and the dining car are closed. Mm -hmm. You will be left without any food if you stay up late, which some people do. Right. Uh, you won't have any food. So bring something for that. If you mm -hmm. want to eat like after 10 o'clock at all, mm -hmm. make sure you bring a snack for that. Yeah, or like if you need something to take medication or whatever, you want to have that, something with you already. Because even though your attendant is available, uh, you know, 24-7, it is usually, you know, expected that they'll be sleeping for a few hours in the middle of the night there. So um, just have your, your stuff and kind of plan ahead and think ahead by either bringing a few snack items with you and then just, you know, having your water there in the room. Uh, and then we've got... Another tip, which is to take note of what room you've been assigned. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in a superliner, roomette especially, you could be on the upper level or the lower level. And so if you want to be on the upper level, some people want to be on the upper level because they think it's a better view. Right. Some people want to be on the lower level because it's easier maybe to get off and on mm -hmm. the train if they have trouble mm -hmm. going up the stairs. Uh, so we found that to be, there are more bathrooms on the lower level. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing. But just make sure that you're getting the room that you want. And so the only way to really do that is to 
uh, figure out which one it is. You can call in. You can ask, and if it's really something mm -hmm. that you're not happy with, see if they'll switch it for you. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, that room assignment is done when you purchase your ticket. So you'll receive an email receipt of your purchase and your assignment is going to be in that receipt. If you don't see it, call them and ask them um, and then they'll let you know. Or if it hasn't been assigned yet, they can assign one to you um, to your preference as well. So you don't have to worry about that on the day that you're trying to get on the train. You'll already know that if you need one downstairs, you have one downstairs, or if you want one upstairs, you'll have one upstairs. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we hope these tips help you on your next sleeper car experience. We have got pictures of all these rooms on our blog on groundedlifetravel.com. So if you need to see what any of these rooms are gonna look like, uh, go check that out. Otherwise, check out more videos on the channel for more tips. Leave us a comment on what your next train trip is gonna be. Give us a like on the video and we will hopefully see you on the rails soon.